ever think about the difference between pain and suffering? Is there a difference? There is actually a significant difference and understanding the difference between the two is very important. Far more important is implementing the difference between the two because it is life-changing, completely life-changing. It is actually the best insurance policy that one can have from the challenges of life. You see, pain is a physical sensation. It's a physical feeling. If we are suffer, if we are, if we have a, a, a an ache in our body, we feel it. It's a pain. Suffering is the emotional pain that we get because of the physical pain that we have. So suffering is an emotional experience and pain is a physical experience. The difference between these two is significant because one is an objective pain, the other is a subjective pain. One is a pain which is imposed on us and one is a pain that is chosen. Suffering, while it is very hard to diminish, can be diminished because it is the way we are in choosing to interact with something going on in our life. Something that's going on in our life may not be our choice at all. It may just be objective reality. So pain is what it is, as they say, but suffering isn't what it is. Suffering is the way we perceive the pain that we have. It is the attitude that we have towards the pain. This is very important for us to understand. And this relates actually to a very unique commandment, a mitzvah that we have on the holiday of Sukkot. And that is to go out of our homes and sit in a very vulnerable environment, which is a sukkah, a hut, which doesn't have a permanent roof and is open to the uh, inclement weather and makes us vulnerable to cold, to rain, possibly even snow, depending on where you live. And it gives us this enormous opportunity. This vulnerability gives us the enormous opportunity that when the weather is not so suitable and we're still sitting and having our dinner in this outdoor hut, this sukkah, that it can be very cold and we can feel the pain of the cold, but we don't necessarily have to suffer from it. However, there is an interesting Jewish law that if someone is mitzta'er, if someone is suffering, then they are not obligated any longer to eat in the sukkah. They can take their food and go into the house. Because the moment a person is suffering, they are actually missing the entire purpose of the mitzvah, or I should say one of the main purposes of the mitzvah. And that is not to suffer. That is one of the lessons we get from the sukkah, that we can live in an environment which is not necessarily so comfortable or necessarily not comfortable at certain times, but we can still choose to be comfortable. We may feel some pain, but we can choose to be comfortable, not to suffer. And that is the amazing thing about certain individuals who actually live every single moment of their lives with pain. Unfortunately, certain people are challenged with that situation. And some of them demonstrate this unbelievable ability to have pain every moment, yet not to suffer. In fact, they turn out to be far happier than people who don't have any pain at all. And that is because they have mastered this ability to not let their pain turn into suffering. However, there is another group of people who even though they are exempt from sitting in the sukkah when they are suffering, they still choose to sit in the sukkah. Wow! Why do they do that? Well, they do that for one of two reasons. Either because they've reached a level of pain and no suffering, 
so they simply don't suffer from the fact that it's cold. They value the purpose of what they're doing so deeply that the suffering doesn't get to them. They may feel the pain, they don't have the suffering. And then there are many, such as myself, who stay in the sukkah not because I'm not suffering, but because I want to use the opportunity to practice focusing on the fact that I may be suffering, but I don't have to be suffering. And to maybe minimize my suffering a little bit with that awareness so that I realize and train myself that pain may not be a choice, but suffering is a choice. You know, we meet people who sometimes behave in ways which are beyond us. People who sometimes are so giving and generous. And you look at them and you say, they have an agenda. No one gives like that so generously, just magnanimously. There's an agenda. And truly, actually, that person is a very giving person and there is no agenda. And maybe as we evolve in life, we begin to realize that there is... There are people who are truly magnanimous people and giving people. And then we say, you know what? That is so beautiful. I would like to aspire to be that way. And what we do is look for opportunities where even though we are not 100% authentically so magnanimous, we act it and we behave it until it starts becoming more a part of us. And we can do the same thing with the suffering that we have from painful situations that we may find ourselves in. And this is the greatest insurance policy someone can possibly have. Because you can buy insurance for whatever you want. We have medical insurance and it doesn't stop people from getting sick, which is the reason why we get medical insurance. Can you buy an insurance policy that will end your suffering? Absolutely not. You can't buy it, but you can earn it and discover it. And we do that through developing deeper perspectives on what goes on in our lives and looking at what's happening in our lives from a deeper place. When we do that, we go deeper than the physical experience and then all we have is pain and we don't have suffering i'm not sure we'll ever reach a place where we don't have any suffering but surely we can minimize our suffering significantly and i don't know what you think but as far as i'm concerned people who go down that road and begin to achieve that are people who are the truly great people in our world.